Hey guys, I'm back here today making a, another video in the series of depression and anxiety, PTSD woes, whatever you really want to call this. Today's topic is probably one that I've shied away from talking about for a long time. Understandably so, because it is a very uh, delicate um, topic. We're here today to talk about the deep dark stuff, the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. And that really needs to be talked about. And just to kind of have a frank but candid conversation, hopefully about uh, suicidal thoughts. I want to start this off kind of by saying, for some people anyways, uh, suicidal thoughts aren't linked to specific events. It could really be any sort of life stressor that's going on that can trigger these kinds of things. I am definitely somebody that has always kind of struggled with this. Certain parts throughout my life have been worse than others and where we're at today um I wish I could say I was sitting on cloud nine right now I guess but I am still not start with how does this pertain to my recent traumatic experience I think the biggest thing for me is that to actually find really good healthy coping mechanisms that you can constantly rely on all the time to keep you out of a negative place is really, really hard. I don't think that people get enough credit for that. I can fully understand now more than ever why people choose different coping mechanisms that aren't quite as healthy. Because coping's hard. Coping is really, really hard. This particular event that's been on my mind uh, within the last, you know, six months now, when it originally happened, I had a lot of people telling me like, you're doing a really great job of coping with this and you still seem like you're yourself and everything. Um, I think I was still like in the, sh the shock phase of everything that had happened. And as kind of the shock wore off and I kind of ended up being more of an uncertainty phase, I guess you could say, that's when I started to feel a lot more panic and anxiety about things. A lot of times I would go to work and I'd come home and just feeling completely trapped. I remember there were a couple days that it was probably, I don't know, 10 degrees outside and I would put on a hat and gloves and I would just go for a walk because I couldn't talk about um, super like traumatic thing that had happened and people would be asking me questions like you know are you doing okay and everything and like the last thing you really ever want to tell people like when you're super down because you don't want to like scream 40 alarm bells at the same time uh, is the fact that you're just so depressed that you kind of can't see the light on the other side and I'm having a really hard time talking about this I remember I kind of did that, I guess, pattern of behavior of going for these really long walks. I mean, five mile walks too. They were not short walks. Like I just continued doing it because there was no other way that I could escape like any of this. I think that a lot of times when you are like super depressed, like you just don't feel like there's any end in sight there's no escape like you can't get away from it because it's just constantly on your mind no matter what you do no matter where you're at who you're with there's just these constant things in your life that keep triggering this thing to come back and it's like relentless you start to close off everybody because you know you're not yourself anymore nobody wants to be the person who is dependent on other people, or at least I don't ever want to be the person who is dependent on other people. Well, simultaneously for me anyways, it's been hard because I'm the kind of person that I dream big. I set my mind to things and I make it happen. And I don't really let the noise in the background get in the way. Everybody's like, you can do it. You can do it. You're so like, you're doing this, you're crushing it. And for something like this, like I've just really wanted to prove them all wrong. I don't exactly know why that is. I think part of it is also a little bit of a control freak. So that was some 
challenge that I could control, right? Like I could really control the outcome of that, seek to get after another challenge. I think that for me anyway is the reason I haven't followed through or whatever you want to say with any of these sorts of things. It's just the fact that um, it's final, right? Um, I think for a long time after my traumatic event happened, you know, I was talking with my therapist about how I'd really, in the moment of my trauma, had accepted either outcome. So I'd accepted whether I would have passed away or whether I would still be here. A couple months into doing therapy, she kind of uh, redirected my attention to the fact that, you know, I really haven't accepted both outcomes. You know, you're like living in this world where everything else is happening around you and you're really just trying to act like you have everything together, I guess. I mean, people at work definitely, for me anyways, because I've been so open about this, were not naive at the fact that things weren't good. You're trapped in this world that feels like it's just keeping things smaller and smaller and smaller. And I remember there were some points over the last six months that for sure it was getting so small to the point that I could tell like my breathing was like just bad. You just kind of get to the point where you realize that you're not living. Like you are physically, you're here, whatever. But a lot of people have been like, you know, dude, you got so much going for you, right? Like. You know, you just graduate college and you have a job and everything's great, but I could be a billionaire, you know, I have a house, I have a significant other, the list goes on and it still doesn't fix any of it. And I think that's really challenging for a lot of people to understand. I guess maybe I want to wrap up this video today by just kind of talking about where I am today. Like I said, I've struggled with this my whole life. Uh, had significant peaks, I guess you could say, versus the valleys. It's a work in progress to find yourself and to try to reconnect with people after things like this happen. Like for me anyways, when I see people that I haven't seen in a very long time and they walk up to me and they ask me how I am, uh, even though I've done a lot in the long time that I haven't seen them, right? My whole last six months has pretty much been engulfed by all of this. I've really focused on trying to make meaningful connections with new people, people that I don't feel the need to explain what's happened and people that I can just be the new for better or for worse. person that I am today. The main way that I try to cope with these things, trying to be intentional with everything that I do, all the people that I meet, just being a person who cares about other people. I think once we really get our feet on the ground in terms of finding a purpose in life, obviously you don't like flick a switch and all these thoughts are gone, right? But a lot of them start to get eliminated because you're starting to really fulfill your basic needs of self-esteem. I guess I want to end this whole thing by saying that change is inevitable, growth is intentional. In order to spin yourself out of depression, anxiety, whatever sort of mental illness you might be facing, you have to be diligent about it. <laughs> I think I've addressed this to the point that I can there's more that I want to talk about about this topic, but I'm not ready to talk about it yet, I guess, is what I've learned through making this video. And that's okay, because it's just another little snapshot of where we're at today.